safe, safe Thanksgiving. And got to eat a lot, so uh, it's good to all have you here. Um, I'd like to introduce Ed Winters. He's setting in for Neil tonight. Uh, good to have him on board. So if you would, stand with us as uh, Commissioner uh, Smith uh, leads us in uh, invocation and remain standing for Pledge of Allegiance. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the glory and the beauty of this nation. We give thanks for this wonderful system of government that you've established in your, in your writings of the Old Testament. We ask for a blessing upon our leaders in Washington, in the Raleigh, in the State House, as well as here in Sanford and in Lee County. We ask for your guiding hand in those deliberations that we must endure. And we ask in the holy name of your Son, Jesus Christ, whose birth we will celebrate in the next few weeks. In most holy and precious name, amen. 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 Congratulations to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Mr. Crompton, you're in charge. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, a few minutes I am, and uh, I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, in odd number of years, I had the first regular meeting in December. The first order of business shall be the election of the chair and vice chair for the ensuing year. So in the organization of the board, uh, the first item is election of the chair. Now in years past, uh, we've done it several different ways. We've done it by ballot, we've done it by motion, you know, vote by hand, so that's a pleasure to the board on what to do for electing the new chair. Mr. Chairman, I move to elect the chairman by acclamation and I nominate the chairman, Charlie Parks. We have a motion by acclamation. Is there any discussion? Being no discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The vote is unanimous. That was easy. Uh, item B is the election of vice chairman. Once again, we have ballots ready, or we can just proceed with a motion. Mr. Chairman, I would move that we do this by voice vote and avoid the formality of a paper ballot. And I would like to put in the nomination, uh, Mr. Kirk Smith, for vice chairman. We have the nomination of Kirk Smith as vice chairman. Any other nominations? Need a motion to close the nominations? I close it on the Wednesday name. All in favor of closing the nomination, say aye. 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 All opposed? All right. So all in favor of Kirk Smith being the vice chairman of the board, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Congratulations. All right, item C is the resolution fixing the time, date, and place for regular meetings. It's on page four and five of your agenda. Uh, the resolution that was presented uh, is, shows the current meeting schedule of the first and third Monday of each month with meetings starting at 6 p.m. and with the planning board uh, being part of the third Monday meeting. <coughs> Is there any discussion on the resolution? Um, I'm not sure if I am in order, but I would, I have some conversation about the time. And um, uh, because of the time of our meetings and the time that we get out of our meetings is, is getting to be a challenge. The meeting time, uh, most of the time we are out at, at 9 o'clock or after 9.30 and it's going to be a habit of ours. And because of that, I would suggest or uh, ask for action or motion for us to change the time to uh, maybe 3 o'clock and because of, of uh, Commissioner Connect and Connect and uh, Smith, I would consider four o'clock, but I think that because of the time that we leave this building, it's just um, a problem. And not only that, but I've gotten uh, a lot of flack or concerns from uh, some of our constituents that comes to the meeting, and so we probably need to change it. And 
in consideration of our our citizens. Mr. Chair, I, in response to that, I, you know, I, I acknowledge that Commissioner Frazier's got a good point about the lateness, especially during the winter period where it gets dark. Um, but I remember two years ago, three years ago, uh, when when the same topic had come up and it was hotly contested, and, and the issue was that there were businessmen like Commissioner Connect who have a full-time job that carry them at least till five or five thirty every day, and in order to accommodate all seven of the commissioners and being able to make sure that they can all be here. Um, we can't ask him to forego his regular full-time job um, when we have the discretion to start the time differently. Plus, we have a lot of other businessmen and women who occasionally do attend this meeting, especially when there are issues of, of importance on the agenda. And when we have those, they, they, uh, they can't get away at 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. They have to wait till 4, 30, or 5 at, at, the, at the earliest. But I, but, but I think on this point, what we should do is remain flexible, and I think we have in the past, that it, on, on any particular date, if, if we anticipate a really long agenda or whatever, and, and we can anticipate it the meeting before, and we can publicly notice it, that we ought to move to move up the start time of, of, an, of, of the next subsequent meeting so that we can give plenty of notice to everyone and, and, and start it maybe a little earlier so we can get a long agenda done. Or if we know we're going to have a long public hearing that night, we can, we can adjust ahead a little. I, I respect that uh, however um, I realized that uh, uh, Commissioner Connect and uh, Smith has employment however when I ran for office I knew that these kind of things was going to be and so I mean not saying that they give up their job for position but uh, county position but I think that we ought to be considerate of that However, I think that we need to move in the direction of trying to get out on a timely manner during our meeting times. If there are public uh, uh, <coughs> things that we need to consider at any other time, then we can consider to go to 6 o'clock probably. Uh, but I think that um, we ought to try to move our time schedule back up. Leo, that was our main thing was keeping our time so the regular citizens have about to move yeah. I know everybody looks at me as I encourage because we <clears throat> do have uh, hours that make things difficult. Uh, but our main objective was, and our main, uh, I think our main reason was that regular citizens have the opportunity to come and they can come and do public comments because it is mainly after work and we make it more accessible to the general public. And I think, I think that's, that's my main reason why I like the time the way it is. I mean, we're flexible here today. You know, we're here at three, so we can go and um, join the uh, Sanford um, Christmas parade. So I mean, there's flexibility times when it needs to be. I think I, I like the way it is. The main thing because of the fact that people in the community can't attend, which they couldn't before. And I, you know, you may have heard people talk to you, but I've other people saying they like it a lot better. They can even watch it too when they get home from work. I just need a motion. I, I, move to I, I put the motion right. on the floor. To move to, to four o'clock. Four o'clock. Right. All right. There's a motion to move the meetings to four o'clock. Is there any more discussion? Uh, yeah. Commissioner Frazier works for the most important employer <laughs> who has the power to terminate permanently. <laughs> so I certainly, certainly want to respect his request. But, but do on a more serious note, or just a serious. But let me say the last meeting was out of whack. You don't have youngsters coming to our meetings and getting to the podium at nine o'clock on school nights. You just don't do that, folks. You take care of your business on the front end, and anytime you have these presentations that may not involve that child or, or an individual sitting in the audience. Let's put those at tail end, and then if a person chooses to leave before the presentations are over, to include our staff, let them go. That, that, was, my, that was my fault. No, I, yeah, yeah, it was. No, well, I, 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 I admit that I, I jumped ahead because I didn't realize that I was, out of, I was off the agenda. 
when I stood up to do the presentation. I, I was going in the order that was published, and I forgot that we switched that. Okay. But if I hadn't done that, then then the, then the, the, the children would have been out here earlier. And so that's my mistake, and I, and I apologize for that. I can't even catch you when you're wrong, and you not want to take credit for it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, part of it was my fault because I could have stopped it and was already going, so I did. <laughs> but now, seriously, and I appreciate hearing your comments, but I'm just saying, let's all bear that in mind in the future. Let's get our staff and the public out of here. And if we want to hear these, these midnight presentations, y'all have that. I'm going to watch football. For all the questions. All right. Any more discussion? All right, the motion is to move the meetings to 4 o'clock on the first and third Mondays. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed say no. I'm no. Sorry, I thought 4 o'clock. Yes, I did say I, I said. I didn't hear the 4 o'clock. I said move it on Thursdays, so. I, I did I say Thursdays? No. I, I missed <laughs> it. <laughs> okay. That's Thanksgiving. The, the, the motion was. <laughs> The Damn first me. and third Mondays at 4 o'clock, all in favor to move to 4 o'clock on the first and third Monday, say aye. Aye. All opposed? No. no. The motion is defeated 4-2. Aye. Right. Need a motion to approve the resolution that was presented? I move to approve the resolution as presented. Right. <coughs> motion, is there any discussion? No discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? I think all said aye. So um, it appears it was six. Six oh. All right. Uh, item D the annual examination of official bonds. The bond uh, um, item starts on page six. It's 25000 for the share, 50000 for the register of deeds. <coughs> Um, 100000 for the tax administrator, 100000 for the finance officer, and uh, any employee who handles 100 or more at any one time is 100 as well. So um, we pr pretty much have kept the, the bonds at this limit since I've been here. It's adequate under statute. So we're recommending approval of the bonds as presented. Any discussion? Yes, I have a couple of questions. <clears throat> these these levels are these are these considered adequate levels? Or we do we get recommendations from either the NCACC or others about what they should be? Um, we get we have some discussion with uh, Marsh, uh, our insurance company out of Charlotte, mm -hmm. um, but they exceed the minimum levels, and I think you know they're we're in agreement that they're just at the adequate levels or okay. the kind of cash that we handle. And I noticed on page eight of this. Um, this uh, handout or agenda package today. We also talked about the liability contract declarations that we have for public officials' liability. Yes, sir. and I and I must have missed that in the past. I was just I was curious about that. This is this the the liability insurance we have for our public officials for for errors and omissions that kind of thing. Yes, sir. And and has it been this this level all along? Um, actually, when I got here, I think that was a little bit lower, yeah. and we raised it. And um, that was based on my experience at the association. Okay. What most governments were were leaning towards and taking, and also what some of the the court cases that we had seen and what uh, what kind of payouts there were, and we raised that level. Okay. And have um, does this all come as part of a package with the bonding, or is this a separate separate insurance? This is actually part of our. Uh, general liability okay. package with the association. So this is just in here for information only? This, this it, it comes as part of that, so you'll see it. All right. I move to approve. Uh, I think Mr. Parks had already moved to approve. I'm <coughs> sorry. <laughs> is there any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries six to zero. And I get to say, oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fine job. Okay, uh, additional uh, items, agenda items. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to add one item. Um, we want to, uh, would like to bring back up the application for lottery funds that the uh, Board of Education presented at our first meeting in November. Okay, so we'll make that item E under new business. Okay. 
John, is there a handout on that? Yes, sir. Uh, oh, okay, uh, okay, I'm sorry. Right. Right. Okay, uh, approval of consent agenda. I move to approve the consent agenda as written. Any discussion? Those in favor? Uh, Aye. Hold on a second before you. Okay. I did have one question. I was actually just looking at if we're placing on the environmental board, we're moving this to Gary. Oh, this is fine. I support that. I was going to point another. I, I believe we have to get solicit some people to replace. Mr. Garrett? He's an alternate right now. We would have an open alternate. We'll, we'll have to advertise it to Mr. Reese. It's, he's, he'll be one of several alternate positions open on boards and commissions. All right. Okay. That was it. Thank you. Okay. So all those uh, in favor of approving the, or do we have a motion for consent? Yeah, I move, I move for okay. approve it. All those approved with consent agenda say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay. Uh, we had no bond signed up for public comments and old business consider resolution guidelines for late taxing. Excellent. Thank you. Oh, okay. Late tax listing penalty. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, we, uh, we discussed this resolution and the issues around this at length at the last meeting. Um, and the motion was made um, at the last meeting to defer this item to today. So it's back on the agenda and it's back presented as was presented at the last meeting since the board did not authorize any changes at the last meeting. So there were a lot of proposed changes discussed, <laughs> but no changes were actually voted on. I probably should clarify that. <laughs> we spun our wheels a bunch, didn't we? <laughs> uh, we had asked the council to, to work on the language <coughs> and uh, uh, attorney Yarbrough is not here and I would suggest or make a motion that we table it uh, till next meeting. I think um, after speaking with Neil, I, you know, without you know, some further guidelines on what you all would like to see changed, I think it's going to be difficult for him to make changes. Um, So, I mean, because uh -huh. yeah, really, in the end, the, the, the statute, it always comes back to the board anyway. You know, even with the guidelines, the, the appeals will come to the board unless the board gives the authority to the Board of Equalization and Review, which was, an, once again, something that was discussed, but it was never actually voted. <coughs> I think Commissioner Dalrumpel was, uh, Del Rumpel was um, concerned about the maybe, and then we talked about the shell. And uh, she wanted Shell, and, and, and I think in the uh, resolution it was um, maybe, so I'm not sure. I think that was resolved. Um, I'm not sure. Because these are guidelines, so since they're up to us to decide in the end, may was used because it's under our discretion. That's the reason why the words may were there, not shall. I think we resolved that point. Yeah, I think that's what the Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. In the last discussion. <coughs> okay. Ms. Mrs. Yell. Yes. Discussion. What are your opinions on the resolution that we're proposing? Um, it's your discretion. You know, <laughs> I, have to, I have to charge the penalty, you know, to be fair and equitable to everyone. That's what the law says I'm to do, and that's what I will do. And... Um, she didn't get a cut. Very, 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 very wise <laughs> response. <laughs> Put it back on the table. We're doing what well, she, you know, she is. The statute is clear with her authority. Yeah. You know, she cannot waive 
penalty, only the board or unless you designate it to the Board of Equalization uh, Review can, <coughs> you know, can waive the penalty or alter the penalty in any way. So she, she's going to do that. <coughs> and, I think and the guidelines would be just that, would be guidelines. Yeah. You it have always a, comes back to the board. You have the discretion to, to do what you want with it on any given case anyway. So, that, you know, if you don't, if you're not comfortable with a guideline, then, you know, you can certainly deal with it case by case, which they have to come before you and look at each situation, each you know, situation on its own merit. Well, that's, that's what the guidelines simply say. At the end of the day, it's up to the board. You're still going to bring all appeals before us anyways, regardless, yes, sir, I have right? To. So that's, yeah. This is really more for us to have kind of a consensus of <coughs> policy or, or set of guidelines so we know what, what, what our center of gravity is when we, when we bring these cases up. Otherwise, it's, we're dealing with each case uniquely every time without any, without any baseline policy in place. So I think it's good to have the, have the guidelines like that. Well, I, I certainly like the idea of knowing whether a person is five days or 30 days or this is the third, fourth, or fifth time. You, when you present it to me, I like it that way because I can look quickly and say, uh, all you is three or four or five, you out, period. Yes, because it's, it shows to me you were negligent or you had no intent to list anyway. So the other two, you have some. Or, or you hire a certified public accountant out of Chicago. <laughs> 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 Your guidelines are from the state, is that correct? The statute. The statute. The, these guidelines? The statute. No, these guidelines in the resolution are not from the statute. No, no. no. Your no. guidelines that you yes, sir. assess. Yes, what I do. It says guideline. if it's law. late, if there's a penalty. Well, I'm charge it. That's the law. Yes, sir. So what do I have, a motion on the floor? We have a motion on the table. Yes. Call the question. Is there any further discussion? Uh, I think we should act upon it. Okay. <coughs> that sounds like a no vote. All those in favor of table it, say aye. 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 Okay, those opposed? No. no. <laughs> okay, we've got four to two. Okay, so it's... <coughs> Defeated as far as table again. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I move to approve the, uh, the the guidelines as written. Okay. Is we've got a motion on the floor. Is there any discussion? Motion on the floor. I just I, for Commissioner Fraser's benefit, you know, these are guidelines. We can change them at any meeting if we if we want to bring it back up or whatever. No, so, bring, yeah. yeah. Again, so. I don't have a problem with with the guidelines. It's just that I know that there was language that needed to be uh, done and so I was hoping that we could get that done prior to working with what we have in front of us. Even our council actually mentioned that. So uh, I just would hope that we would not approve something that's going to have to be worked on after we <coughs> approve. Any other discussion? I look at the bright side. The board still maintains the control. If along the way we find other things that will tighten up or make it better, we can certainly revisit the idea. Okay. Okay, no further discussion. I'll talk to the question. All those in favor of approving the resolution say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Mr. Chairman, I, in, in follow up to this, and, and let me just get a clarification from Mary before she sits down. The uh, the uh, penalty that we assessed for Magnetti on the last meeting, where right after we tabled the the guidelines, which would which if we had put it in place would have would have capped the penalty on Magnetti at five thousand dollars. Now we've put the policy in place, and yet last time we voted a $25,000 penalty of Magneti Morelli. And I'm suggest I would suggest to you all that, that, um, that had I been more astute last meeting when uh, Commissioner Reeves was encouraging me to 
vote for a $5,000 penalty and I'd, I'd swung my vote that way, then they would have been capped at the last meeting at $5,000. I'd like, since I voted against it, I'd like to, to revisit, uh, to re-raise this issue, this mo motion to, um, to <coughs> instead of hitting them with a full $25,000 penalty, it, it regress back to the $5,000 cap, which is now our policy. So they don't get caught in the twilight zone between meetings. Uh, I think that's only fair since that's what, what we say is our guidelines for all companies. I think that a $5,000 penalty for any business is a su substantial amount of money. I don't care how big they are. And that I think that it's appropriate that we show um, a little bit of grace during this time of the year and that, uh, that, we, that, we, uh, uh, that we have a set of guidelines <coughs> that we have uniformity in how we assess penalties that we'd apply that retroactively to Magneti. And that's my motion. Any discussion? Yes. <clears throat> I hate to disagree with you. But there is an aspect of the EDC grant that they've received from the taxpayers. And again, I've said it before, and it's, a, it's an insult to the taxpayers that they didn't have the decency to, to uh, file a timely manner. And on top of that, they received over $40,000 of taxpayer money. So in an essence, probably, that grant's coming back to us. I mean, that's something a previous board enacted. Just because I think, just because they're taking economic incentives, I don't think you, you should treat them like lepers. I mean, they still paid their taxes. This is just a, a, a late filing on a listing penalty. They still pay their full amount, and they didn't pay a less of their taxes, correct? They well, they paid. probably haven't paid it yet because it's mean, not. Um, I mean, that's not the issue that they're getting away with paying no, less. No, it's not about payment. Exactly. It's, about it's not about payment. So. Only. But it is, it is a levy on their tax bill. So the $25,000 is on our books. Right, correct. Yes. <clears throat> so they're still paying their, well, they haven't, but assuming they go recent, uh, but that's a whole different discussion if they don't pay their taxes. Right, that's an interest yeah. issue. That's a different that's issue. Different. So as we know it so far, they have always paid their taxes. Regular taxes, yeah. As far as I know. Yeah, so yes. um, I still think it's a high levy at 25000 regardless if uh, they received economic development. That's something, that's a whole different decision. <coughs> this, isn't, this isn't an opinion necessarily. It's just a statement of fact. The statute may not seem fair, but it is equitable because it's based on a percentage. Mm -hmm. So if I have... Ten thousand dollars worth of property, property and I pay pen, uh, per, uh, lateless penalty on ten percent of what I own, and I have a million dollars and I pay ten percent. It's equitable in that regard. So yeah. the statute is equitable. But yeah. The, the point I would make though is that is that when you're talking about companies that employ hundreds of people, and you hit them with substantial <coughs> fines like this. What they do, they either take it out of shareholders' pockets, or they fire people, or they, they, they trim their, their staff. Because, because when you hit people for tens of thousands of dollars, that money comes from somewhere. Yeah, and so when you, when, you go, when you do that, uh, when you hit somebody with a, with a penalty and there wasn't any actual damage done, what you've done is you basically said, you know, we don't care if you lay somebody off. Uh, that's the message you send. You know, we talk about economic incentives and how important people think they are. And I would tell you that if we're a pro-business environment, We'll, we'll slap somebody on the wrist for being late, but we don't hammer somebody unnecessarily for, with a $25,000 fine because, because, frankly, all that does is that's going to translate into somebody getting laid off or somebody getting fined. Not necessarily. Uh, uh, not necessarily. Uh, you think they got that $25,000 just sitting around in the front office ready to give away? My concern here is, is we are or making a difference between a person with 25 and a person with 82. It's pretty much what we're doing. And we, we had uh, considered that at the last meeting that this is what we would do and now we want to come back and change it because we just changed, uh, amended the law today or amended the guidelines today. I, I think that what we should do is, is, is carry on from where we, uh, with the, uh, the action that was taken at the last meeting, and we move on forward with what we have now. I think if we keep backing up, then we'll find ourselves playing games with, with people 
and we're making it personal. And I don't want this board to make actions personal. And that's what it seems uh, to me. And I'm just saying to me. Well, to me, it seems like when you take $25,000 out of my pocket, that's very personal. Well, the thing of it is, is that the other issue with that is if, if Nettie Morelli uh, had filed, then this penalty wouldn't be uh, uh, set before them. However, the other people had the same issue as well. So just because of that, it doesn't make it right for them not to have to pay the penalty if they if they made the issue. I mean, the list well, of this was the issue. Well, the same thing with incentives. Just because I have well, 10 employees and somebody has 100 employees, I don't get an economic yeah. incentive and the 100 uh, <coughs> employee business does. Just remember that when we talk about well, incentives, fair and equitable. Well, we'll what, we'll we'll what we'll find ourselves doing is we'll start just juggling things around as we think it's okay instead of looking at the guidelines. And I don't. I mean, this is this is their first late filing in five years. It's not like they do this to, to try and, and, and get around paying taxes. I can see they they do this on a yearly basis. That they've been caught in the last two three years constantly trying to get around paying these taxes on property. It certainly is not because of uh, uh, of this company. It's with anyone who would violate or who uh, list their taxes late. I mean, it's not just this particular company. It's just anyone. I think that when yeah, we start making plans on that. Reed, you have yes, uh, Mr. Reed, Mr. Reed, Mr. Reed, Mr. Reed. Back when I was a teenager, I was working in a very dusty environment. And I sent my cousin to get us a couple of Cokes. He came back with one Coke. And I said, well, who's Coke? He said, this is my Coke. The machine took your money. <laughs> 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 I learned a very valuable lesson that day. <laughs> the, the point being, let's be sensible. They're not trying to rob us. It was a late listing. We, we don't have to be unmerciful to everybody that come forward with, with, with that late listing, unless, of course, they've exceeded the number. I think there's a reasonable number of time that you can have a late listing, and after that, it becomes, <coughs> in my opinion, a habit of yours, and in that case, you ought to pay for your habits. So I said all that to say, as I did at the last meeting, 5,000 is reasonable in this regard. And I submit to that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I, I think one of the things I, I wasn't quite sure I understood what we were doing last time. So I went out and asked some questions. And rather than, you know, I was translating it into we were missing taxes and they were delaying it so we wouldn't pay the taxes. I found that that was incorrect. We, we weren't missing any taxes. It was a penalty <coughs> for filing late. Right. And so what you want to do, to, to my way of thinking, is a reasonable assessment to keep people on track and on top. Right. And um, I think, you know, sometimes 10% <coughs> may be way, way too high, especially if they haven't done anything. I think this resolution <coughs> allows us enough freeway that we can look at it and individual what they've been doing what they've done in the past and what they've done this time i think it is our responsibility as a board to do that rather than pass that responsibility off so given that uh, we have a motion to uh, have a motion right. for to, to approve this, this motion is to uh, reduce the penalty to Magnetti Morelli retroactively to $5,000, which would be consistent with the new guidelines. Okay. No further discussion. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, we need to raise a hand. All those in favor, say aye. Okay. All those opposed? So two, four. Let me. I'm sorry. No, I, I was just going to say, let's make it clear that this applies only to the folks who appeal. Yes. Yeah. I don't want some guys in their home saying, I need to go get my money. <coughs> if I was sitting at home, I would do that. Well, yeah. the, the appeal file date is passed anyways, correct? 
Well, you, they can appeal penalty. That's not that's not an evaluation appeal. So they can. Um, there's no time limit on, on penalty. But it's not the same as what we're dealing with here today. They didn't appeal it, right? Right. I mean, most people will pay their penalty. I, I agree. Yes. I, that's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But unless they they file a written appeal, I don't bring it before you. Right. Okay. Thank you, Mary. If I had if I had a listing that there was, I would certainly send in an appeal now if I could get it through. Well, fortunately, there's not really that many that are above that five thousand. Yeah. So that's good. Right. We try hard to work with our taxpayers and overall. <coughs> good job. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, new business. Uh, consider grant application for the year 2014 senior health insurance information. Melanie? Good afternoon, Mr. Park, Sanborn. I have two items for you. And the first one is to approve the fiscal year 2014 Seniors Health Insurance Information Program Outreach Grant which is under the Medicare Improvement for Patients and Providers Act, the acronym MIPA. Um, the dollars are $1,739 and there's no match required on that. And this is um, to promote what we call the extra help option in the Medicare and to help um, older adults understand the Medicare benefits um, further. It's an outreach meaning that we need to advertise the um, program that's available to them at the Enrichment Center and we will advertise on the Colts van two ads and that will return some revenue into the Colts system um, and advertising with local newspaper and radio and our, our Center Post newsletter that goes out uh, a thousand copies a month. Okay, any questions? Move to approve. Okay, motion to approve. How, how many do you not reach with them coming down there. The extra help is a unique batch of folks. They're folks out there who are dual eligible under Medicare and Medicaid. And we have to seek them out ourselves. It's not reported to us to go out and find them. So we have these clinics, these open door clinics. We'll go, Janice will be going to pharmacies. That's something we haven't done. So we, the number goes up each year of the folks that we see and she she sees people <coughs> even after the December 7th deadline. Okay, any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? That's correct. Okay, the next one is the evidence-based based health promotion and disease prevention grant for fiscal year 2014 and it's to um, promote um, disease prevent it's disease prevention and it's um, what we call can evidence-based health care programs such as Tai Chi and diabetes uh, self-management and living healthy with um, diabetes and we will offer Tai Chi classes to our Diners Club participants at no cost and that's a, um, some folks who could really use that alternative form of, of exercise the amount is $2,814 and does require a local match of 313 Any questions on that? I don't, I don't really have a question about the grant itself or the approval of the grant, but I would ask your cooperation with one thing. Okay. Um, and, and it might be appropriate for you and the health department rep, whoever that person is, to do this. I'm, I'm interested in seeing us <coughs> on the subject of health promotion of people with diabetes <clears throat> the uh, the food banks here in, in the county are distributing uh, food and it's a it's a wonderful thing particularly this time of year it's an important thing but a lot of the food that we're distributing are being distributed to people with type 2 diabetes and they aren't getting appropriate medical care at these food banks and or, or medical advice and they're consuming things or being distributed things which really aren't very healthy and and as, as desirable as it is to have things to put in your stomach this time of year, I think we ought not be promoting, you know, things that are going to cause their diabetes to be out of control. And I I would ask that 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 at least on the senior front that, that you guys would would see about reaching out to the Bread of Life Ministries, to CUOC, 
um, and to any other food banks that are doing food distributions to see if, they're, if they would like someone to review what they're doing. And, and, and maybe this is more appropriate for your health department, but I was thinking seniors in your case, because there are a lot of seniors that go to these food banks to, to, to help them at least screen the stuff they're distributing to make sure that we're getting healthy food to them. I apologize for it being off, off the subject, but yeah. it's something that's troubled me for a while. That's a good point. They do the same screening with ethnicity. So, yeah. you know, why can't they do it for Debbie? Yeah, I really, because I, I used to be really disturbed at the stuff. We were giving cakes and, and, uh, and, and, and you know, gluten-laden uh, foods all the time at Bread of Life, and it just really troubled me that we're giving it to people with diabetes. Well, uh, uh, there's two problems with that, because that is what through this. Yeah. <coughs> One problem is, is they distribute what they have to distribute. That's true. And so, where they get their foods from, that's what they have to give out. I just and wouldn't they, want to put a bullet in the gun to shoot them with, you know. Well, it's, it's, um, yeah, that's, a, that's an option that you have. A lot of folks don't have that option. Yeah. And that's what we're dealing with. And, and this is another area where I think government might be going too far. You know, some of these handouts are necessary not just for the recipient but for the family who are not <coughs> in the same okay. condition. So there are lots of things that, that we need to be very, very careful and concerned about. I don't know. And that puts too much of a burden on the program people. Yeah, I think the education part is, is a good part. Yeah, uh, they know it. But well, it's, uh, uh, and by the way, what, I wasn't asking for someone to go down there and, 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 and filter what they're handing out. I was just saying, reach out to the two agencies that are giving you know, food to thousands of people and say, would, do you need any assistance in reviewing your dietary menu? Because I know CUOC has a dietary menu, but I'm not sure that they have you know, physicians or, or, or dietitians that are looking at what they're, what they're distributing. Tell us not to give no, I, I wasn't saying that at all. <laughs> <laughs> what is uh, Tai Chi? Tai Chi is a form of Peggy, who's our facilitator. She actually took a class, and it um, was a lot like a, a yoga type class. Uh, a lot of flowing movement and balancing, and um, it helps with the arthritis. I love that game from Hunger. <laughs> tai Chi. Keep in shape, sir. No, don't get that food. Okay. Uh, do we have a motion? I move to approve. Okay, we have a motion to approve in public discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Acceptance of uh, the FY 2013 Homeland Security Grant Program and the Memorandum of the Good afternoon, Chairman of Parks and Board. Uh, what you have before you is a memorandum of understanding um, between Lee County and the state of North Carolina for a Homeland Security um, exercise that we're going to um, carry out in early summer of uh, 2014. Uh, the exercise is going to focus on something that no one's done before. We're going to work on the recovery aspect of it. So instead of being react, uh, reacting to an incident, we're going to worry, worry about the recovery part, uh, which we saw was a big deal during the tornado as far as being able to get your funds back and how you move people around. And without giving you any more information on exactly what we're going to do, because that will kind of defeat the purpose, um, basically we'll put exercise together uh, by May 1st of next year and this event will take place between August 1st and September the 15th. Okay. Any questions for Shane? Yeah, I'm sorry. Explain to again what exactly we, we're, we're getting here. It's a, we're going to do a Homeland Security exercise and event planning exercise. Um, we're getting 11, not to exceed $11,111.11 .11 in reimbursement from the state of North Carolina. I don't know how they came up with that number. I really requested 12,000 through our domestic preparedness region, but that's the number they gave us. Um, 11, 11, 11, 11. <coughs> and that basically will pay for the contractor, supplies, foods, and refreshments for the uh, exercise. It'll take place in our EOC. It'll be a three day event. We'll work from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and we'll simulate a real world event here in our county and we'll focus on the recovery aspect of it. What other agencies will be involved with it's just yours? It will be Lee County will host it, and then it will be the state of North Carolina and the incident management teams that are made up of people from all across the state. What about locally? 
Yeah, locally. locally. Uh, yes, it'll be our EOC staff. And then we'll pull in incident management team personnel to supplement and support those people. Okay, I guess what I'm getting at, anybody from the city and the yes. Broadway, town of Broadway? It, everyone that's in our EOC okay. will be invited to this right. event. Yes, sir. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, we have a motion. I move to approve. Okay, we have a motion to approve. Any further discussion? Yeah, I got one. It's, it's, it's a sidebar. It's not Homeland, but it, it does deal with disasters. Do you have anyone on your staff that monitors the uh, FEMA programs uh, during the course of the year during the hurricane periods? Sometimes FEMA had money for properties that have been damaged long after uh, yeah, the storms. It usually falls back in, um, like when you have a flooding event. Yeah. We'll have money come available through the mitigation yeah. uh, funds to go in and buy these properties that have flooded repeatedly. Right. Um, there's been some money out there to the tornado, the tornado shelters, but That's it was right. very hard to get in our area because we're predominantly not a tornadic state, right. which we proved them wrong on that. but. Um, yes, we do keep an eye on that, and those uh, we have uh, planners through the state that push that information down when funds come available. Okay, that would be something I think could be very, very beneficial. I still maintain and, and have great concern about the San Lee area. Yes. Uh, near our part. Folks down below. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, hey, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay, here. Thank you. Okay, uh, consider closing portion of Bruce Floggins Road. Mr. Crumpy, please. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, we received this request from Mark Marietta Materials. Um, I'm going to hand out a uh, memorandum that I asked for. It's uh, actually dated 26th of December. It's supposed to be the dated 26th of November from our planning staff. and. Uh, I wanted to get their opinion um, on the record that they were okay with the closure of this road, um, even though it's a dead end road right there at Martin, Ma Martin Marietta. Just wanted to make sure that they had reviewed it and make sure there was no uh, potential public use for, for the road in any way, shape, or form, and they've agreed, and they've agreed with the request uh, to uh, grant Martin uh, Marietta this, this closure of this road. So. What this effect, in effect does, that, correct me if I'm wrong, because it doesn't say it explicitly in the, in the packet, uh, other than the fact that they've had trash accumulating out the end of that road. People drive down there and use it as a dump, and, that, and so therefore if they close the road, since they own both sides, the property on both sides of the road, then they can effectively shut down that road and, and prevent people from coming back there to drop trash. Is that, is that what we're trying to do? Yes. Okay. And the resolution's on page 58 mm -hmm. that needs to... Be concerned about that. I have uh, a motion. So moved. Okay, we have a motion to approve any further discussion. I, I'm wondering how far back from the intersection road is that? Is that where this yellow block is the area they're talking about? Yes, sir. And um, you happen to know what that distance is from the intersection? You know, sometimes when you cut off a dump, you only move it up. Close to the Hickory House Road there. I was going to say the distance The distance there is probably about 100. I would say based on the lot that's you know, number lot number one there, that's probably about 150 feet. Okay. Put a couple of deer cameras out there, you'll catch them. All right. All right. I guess them all they did. Them mountains. Catch them up. Okay. Any further discussion? We have a motion on the floor to approve. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those aye. opposed? You have it. Thank you, Bob. Okay. Uh, application of lottery funds. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Um, I actually uh, wrote the wrong date on this um, agenda abstract. The board met and discussed this, um, I believe it was back October 21st, so uh, not November 4th, but anyway, we did discuss it and, and I was directed to meet with um, the superintendent um, and discuss 
using performance contracting instead of using lottery proceeds to replace air handlers and electronic, electric heat at Eastleigh Middle School. Um, I did meet with uh, the superintendent. He invited me to the facilities and, and technology committee meeting, which I did go to. Um, I did plagiarize the notes that uh, Commissioner S Smith took at the meeting, which is at the back of all this information I gave you. Uh, we met with them on November 21st, 2013 at 5 o'clock and um, discussed it. They did, uh, the committee did give a um, recommendation to approve the analysis uh, to be done to see if this is a feasible project. The only, you know, that still has to go to their board and they don't meet until next, uh, next Monday, I believe. Um, board of Education meets on the 10th, I guess that's next Tuesday, a week from tomorrow. And uh, so they still have to approve going forward to that. What the staff did ask, um, they want to make sure that they are in a position, no matter if we're in control of, of this project, you know, through the performance contracting or if they're in control of the project, they want to make sure it gets done this coming summer. So they ask that we go ahead and approve their application um, to be sent to the state and we just won't draw down the funds until the analysis is done and both parties agree whether to go forward or not with the performance contracting. So this is an interim approval of the use of the lottery funds for that purpose. That's correct. The, the request can be withdrawn um, if we go forward with the performance contracting. So, so we, we'll hit another decision point sometime between now and summer when they want to execute the money and, and you'll come back and give us a recommendation again. Actually, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, they said something about March they need to, need to have a final yeah, action. Yes. We, we would try to have, um, the folks that do these analysis can do these in about 30 days once we decide who we want to do the analysis. There, there's no money outlay for the county. Um, the company that comes in and does the analysis is really taking the risk that you know they're going to gain some knowledge on uh, on their competitors about uh, you know the project and when it comes time to bid the project they can come in with a better bid. But um, we've used one company in the past um, to analyze our buildings. They're willing to come back and do it again, even though they we didn't even you know, put our buildings out to bid because they, you know, the project wasn't feasible. Does this have any direct impact on our capital um, improvement program for next year? Yes, sir, it would. This would take two projects off the board that they have had in their CIP for five or six years. I think it's been in there every year since right. I've been here. I, since I've, I've been well, here. It would probably take one of ours off, wouldn't it? It would take the, some of the library renovations off of our we're going to try to, to uh, group the library into these two buildings in the analysis, um, which is our uh, most inefficient building. I, as long as it doesn't obligate us, you know, an action today doesn't obligate us in our CIP in any way, shape, or form, I'm, I'm fine with it. I just, I just don't want to do anything that we're, we come back and retroactively say, well, you know, we already made that decision for our CIP without taking everything else. This, what, what they have decided is they're going to move forward with the project by using the lottery proceeds. And based on what they can draw down, um, if they do both the East and West middle schools, it will tie up the lottery for three to four years. Mm -hmm. And they won't be doing any other projects. So that list of all that, uh, I wouldn't call it little projects, but the other projects like the paving projects and, and the drainage projects and the roofing projects and the major painting renovations or whatever that they've been using the lottery funds for, they're now tying those funds up for four years. And so what will inevitably will happen is they'll start coming back to us and start trying to creep up that, the, uh, the current capital, I call it, um, the capital expense that we give to them annually. They'll, they'll want more there. So my objective here was to try to free up the kid, you know, not tie the lottery proceeds up for a long period of time. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of with you on that. That, that if, we can, if we can figure out a way to do a performance uh, yeah. contracting on this and use the energy savings, um, this is what we should try to do. Are, are they in agreement with using the energy savings? 
Well, kind of, sort of. <laughs> it all comes down to you know part of our annual dance with them on current expense right. because you remember that we give them the utility money to pay their utilities in current expense and you know say okay we're going to give you the current expense we expect to check back you know we're just exchanging money with ourselves there yeah. so what we agree to is that when we get down to the discussion of current expense with them that is going to be part of the consideration and I'm sure there are some folks that want to talk about SRO funding as well, well as part of the consideration. The thing on energy funding that I like about these these types of deals is that it incentivizes the, the, the public schools to be careful with their energy consumption. I, I mean, that yeah, I mean, you, you want them to be careful. Yeah, but, but I also want both boards to be in agreement that this is what we're going to do with the savings and not get down to the budget time and have the war going. Yeah. I'd rather have it clear up front. Let me ask you the other question I want to ask. It appears we're only doing East Lee at this time. That's correct. And how far out do they anticipate West Lee, if at all? Two years. <clears throat> and there's certain, uh, and I know this has been on the radar screen for quite a while, there's certain that they can wait that long for West? I, I don't have a a monetary solution that they did want to do at the same time. So <laughs> let's get that out of the way. I think they're resigned to the fact that you know they're, they're they took a look at both units and decided east needed to be fixed before Perfect. west. I'm sure Whether that. west can make it, you know, for the two years or not, I'm sure they're doing their best to make sure that it's going to. I agree, but it's still fall back on us. That's where I want the board to be aware that this is a possibility. We may wake up and find this west. Yeah, I think this. Yes, sir. I think this adds to a long, you know, list of discussion with the board right. of education. Right. We have a lot of issues with them, and right. um, I see a lot of discussion in the future. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I got one other quick, just a technical question mm -hmm. here. It says the HVA system in place is 35 plus years old. <clears throat> And I'm saying to myself, when was it easily built? Did we put a used system in there? Is that what we did? That would be 78. I'm not sure. That's probably about right. It's before my time. Yeah. East Lee was built in 75 or 78. Both East and West were built simultaneously, weren't they? Was it that? That's about right, because. I went to school there the first year it was built. I'm aging myself now. But Careful. <laughs> well, that's about right. So you're 35. Well, you're still within the 39. So <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes, sir. It's hard to believe that two yeah. schools were that old. Right, okay. Any further discussion? Questions? Just, just to add is we, we're giving permission for the Board of Education to apply for the lottery funding. Actually, contingent, it comes upon, us, yes, contingent upon the performance contracting assessment simultaneously going on. Yes. Uh, do you need permission to make arrangements with the financing aspect or the, the uh, assessment aspect? Not yet. I'm talking with a company, and we'd probably have that too on the 16th to discuss. Who and the assessment is. doesn't cost us anything, is what I understand. They do that for free based on the possibility of savings and you know not really don't really want to come to, to the board and, and ask for approval until the Board of Education as a whole gets their approval to, right. to pursue it so they meet on the 10th we meet on the 16th and I just kind of thought that was the natural progression Absolutely. I didn't want to get out ahead of them Absolutely. okay if no further discussion then I have a motion move it, move. Okay, motion to approve. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Mm -hmm. Mr. Crump, the manager's report. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't have a manager's report tonight. Okay. <laughs> well, I hope you have a good uh, holiday and Thanksgiving. Yes, sir. I did. Thank you. Well, stay within your weight. Thank, you. Thanks. You know, add and coming tonight to, to fill in for Neil while Neil yes. is uh, in Rowan County chasing something down over there. So, oh, okay. Um, a little bit more.
I think Ad would rather I think Ad would rather be here than where Neil is tonight. That's right. Let's go over there. Okay, Commissioner Fraser. Just trust that everybody continue a safe and wonderful holiday. I think that everybody's probably still on holiday system probably, and so we just hope that they continue it and be safe. And have a good time at the parade tonight. Uh, I think Jim has got his four wheeler, and uh, he's going to get out there tonight. My, my wife's old truck. <laughs> if, it, if, it, if it makes it to the end of the parade, so, so we <laughs> ask that uh, you all stay warm, drink uh, a lot of hot chocolate and coffee, and uh, and be safe. So that's why you want to be right there. Thanksgiving and have fun. Uh, I had a wild weekend out in the mountains. Okay. Had a wild, wild Christmas tree. Yep. Reed. Yes, sir. I'm hopeful that uh, 2014 that we'll have a fantastic Lee County, which includes Sampton and Broadway. Agenda, uh, not a not a Republican agenda, not a Democratic agenda, but a Lee County agenda to get us back in step with our needs, employment, economic development. I think we have a lot of people working hard toward that end. I, I agree, and uh, so I I'm agreeing agreeing with you. I'd like to see us go forward and do great things for yeah. Kevin. Well, uh, I don't have anything further, so I just want to say congratulations to the chair and vice chair. So, uh, <laughs> I move to adjourn. <laughs> Those in favor say aye. Aye. See you at the parade. Sorry.